Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on transmission line theory. For this video, I'm going to explain how can we actually obtain the maximum and also the minimum impedance of transmission line. So this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part 10 series discussion on transmission line theory. So guys, if you're keen to know more about transmission line theory, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on transmission line theory. For this particular playlist, okay, I suggest that you guys go in sequence in order to have a complete understanding on transmission line theory. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, really, thank you so much for your strong support. Actually, it's very tough to do videos on knowledge sharing in YouTube. Nowadays, I guess that everybody come into YouTube in order to get some form of entertainment. Hence, it's always very challenging to do knowledge sharing. However, I'm glad to share that this channel, Technology Discussion, managed to get some of you guys' attention. And I hope the market share can slowly, slowly pick it up. Once again, thank you so much. Let's do a very quick recap on reflection coefficient and also VSWR. Let's start off by refract coefficient. Okay, how we actually can calculate refract coefficient will be by the refracted voltage over the incident voltage or refracted current over the incident current. I guess you understand what is incidence and what is refracted. Basically, if you remember this, incident is basically the source and refracted basically is the load. There is no changes that the incidence it is actually smaller than the refracted wave. In short, the refracted wave biggest can be equal to incident. However, the refracted wave cannot be bigger than the incident wave. And hence, because of this, imagine what, what I mentioned early on, the refracted current can be the same as incident current, which is one over one, or the refracted voltage can be the same as incident voltage, which is again one over one, so hence, this reflection coefficient, one of the range will be equals to one. And also, let's say, for example, the key ideas on the other extreme is I totally don't have any reflected current or I totally do not have any reflected voltage. And hence, on another extreme of reflection coefficient will be equals to zero. In short, reflection coefficient range is basically from zero to one. Okay, so basically this is the range for refraction coefficient. Next, let's move on to VSWR. Okay, I believe I have proved this formula from time to time. Okay, so if you have not forgotten again, okay, you should be able to understand this formula. Let's take a look over this VSWR equation. Again, as I told you that the refraction coefficient is from zero to one. So let's substitute this thing equal to zero into this equation. This is what I will get. So from here, I can calculate that VSWR is equals to one. On another extreme case, refraction coefficient equals to one. And from here, I can compute that VSWR will be infinity because one minus one is equal to zero. Anything divided by zero will be infinity. So hence from here, I conclude that the VSWR range is from one to infinity. And S for refraction coefficient will be from 0 to 1. Next. Okay, so this is what I have done on the video on transmission line part 9. And I have also proved this equation, which is on the video on part 7 on the transmission line. Okay, so I will be using this equation to get the maximum and also the minimum impedance of the transmission line. How can I do about this? Okay, so this is a VSWR. Okay, so basically earlier on, I have shown it to you. This is one plus 
refraction coefficient divided by one minus refraction coefficient. Okay, refraction coefficient, I have proved it in the video part seven. And what I'm going to do is basically I sub this refraction coefficient, okay, this number, which is ZL minus Z0 over ZL plus Z0 over here. So I mean this common factor, okay, which means that ZL plus Z0 plus ZL minus Z0, which is obtained over here. Again, from here, I will do a common factor, okay, which means that ZL plus Z0 is over here. Next will be minus ZL, okay, which is minus ZL. And then minus minus become positive here. So from here, I can calculate that this is actually equals to 2ZL. Okay, because Z0 and Z0 cancel each other. So therefore, I have 2ZL. For this case here, ZL and ZL, they cancel. So therefore, I have 2Z0. And basically, I cancel the 2. So therefore, over here, I have successfully proved another equation on BSWR, which is equal to ZL over Z0. Okay, so earlier on, I have done this. BSWR is B max over V min, or BSWR is 1 plus refraction coefficient over 1 minus refraction coefficient. So another example of BSWR will be equal to ZL over Z0. Okay, the load impedance over the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. Let's take another look here. Okay, so for this case here, there are actually two extreme cases. Remember, as I told you earlier on, this refraction coefficient, if you still remember, they cannot be less than zero. The minimum is zero. And hence, in order to ensure this is zero, okay, there shouldn't be any negative number, which means that for this case, ZL must be always bigger than Z0. So when ZL is big, bigger than this Z0, okay, so basically this equation will be valid. For example, for this case here, if Z0 is greater than ZL, then this equation will be Z0 minus ZL. And from here, this BSWR will be equals to Z0 over ZL. Okay, so I hope this is clear. On a BSWR, the situation depends on the impedance of the load and also the impedance of the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. Next, okay, let me quickly go through how can we actually obtain the maximum impedance of transmission line and also the minimum impedance of transmission line. Let's focus on the maximum impedance of transmission line first. Okay, so in order to get the maximum impedance, okay, I need to have the V max over the I minimum. Okay, so basically this is a resistor. Basically follow the Ohm's law, okay, will be V over I. And in order to get the maximum impedance, okay, the V must be as large as possible and the I must be as small as possible. So with this situation, then I will be able to arrive at the maximum impedance here. So therefore, the equation to compute the maximum impedance will be equal to V max over I min here. So what I'm going to do next is basically I do a V max divided by V min, okay, which is shown over here, and I min divided by V min, okay, which means that over here is over. So basically, they reverse their position. So over here, what can you see over here? If you still remember, V max over V min is equal to BSWR. And over here, you can see that V mean divided by I mean is basically the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. So therefore, over here, you can see that I actually can obtain the maximum impedance of transmission line by doing this. BSWR multiplies by the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. Next, okay, I can also obtain the minimum impedance of transmission line. And again, by now, I think it should be much more easier in order to get the minimum impedance, I need to have the minimum voltage divided by, by the maximum current. And with this situation, then I will be able to achieve the minimum impedance. I guess it's much more easier for you to get it now. So next, what I'm going to do is basically I divide by V max. I divide by here by V max. So basically V mean divided by V max. It is I max divided by V max. Again, because of this is a divide, the position change. And from here, I can see that this is actually 1 over VSWR. And again, this will be the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. And hence, from here, you can see that how can we actually obtain the maximum impedance of transmission line? It's simply VSWR multiplied by Z0, which is the characteristic impedance of transmission line. How can we actually obtain the minimum impedance of transmission line? Will be equals to 1 over VSWR 
multiplied by the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. So from here, I will show it to you. How can we obtain the maximum impedance and also the minimum impedance of transmission line? Okay, why this is important? Okay, before I explain why this is important, okay, again, if you find this video helpful, please consider to like this video and also subscribe to this channel. Also, please remember to turn on this notification bell so that the future video, okay, we will notify you. Once again, thank you so much. Let me explain why we need to know the maximum and also the minimum impedance of transmission line. Okay, I guess you know what is called impedance matching. The idea that we want to do an impedance matching is to achieve maximum power transfer from the source all the way to the load. And in order to achieve this, okay, what happened here is basically the power, for example, the characteristic impedance okay, must be matched to the load. So in order to do this matching, as I shared with you earlier on, the voltage or the impedance or the current, they actually vary at different points. Let's focus on impedance first. In order to do a proper matching, because the impedance actually vary, and hence I need to have some idea what will be the maximum impedance, and I also need to know another extreme, what will be the minimum impedance. And in order to achieve this, then I will be able to do this matching network. So with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please sub to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much.